I hang with all of the youngsters, and, you know, they be pushing it on me. Unk, hit the backwood, hit the backwood. I'm like, I ain't smoking that. And when I finally hit it, I just liked the way it made me feel. It was like it was a relaxer rather than me, you know, going to sleep or wanting to be too excited. It was like the perfect it was the perfect match for me, especially at the age I'm at. Mm. And so you just buy the cigar, take it apart, remove the tobacco. You do it all yourself. You just watch me put one together in 37 seconds. That's your thing. And you do know that. I do. <laughs> I do. I learned how to smoke uh, blunts from Charlie Murphy. That's, mm. that's when I first started smoking blunts. Charlie Murphy was a bad motherfucker. He was man. a bad motherfucker. When was, I started smoking blunts with him, I was like, okay, now I get it. I smoked a blunt with him in 1993 on the set of my movie Murder Was the Case. Wow. That's the first movie I ever was in, and he was the bad guy. And really? it was so Yeah, it was an 18-minute movie that I did on Death Row Records that went with my uh, first album, Doggy Style. It was called Murder Was the Case, and Charlie was the bad guy. The shit was hard as fuck. And I loved him so much for just giving me off the intro. This is my first time acting, and he was in my movie. And we, you know what I'm saying, hung out, smoked, and chilled, and became friends. And I just loved the fact that he wasn't, like, trying to big homie me. Right. He was looking at me like, you know, you a star now, you're going to be a star later, and I'm going to treat you like, I'm going to treat you now, I'm going to treat you the same way later. And we always maintain that great relationship. Charlie was an authentic human being. Mm -hmm. He really was. He was uh He's a rare guy who started doing stand-up after he was already famous. That's, mm. a, that's a hard thing to do. Look, I got a story. Me and Charlie Murphy had a TV show for uh, MTV. It was like a story about me as a kid, and it was like cartoon. So we was on the, <laughs> we was on the call with the MTV people. This is how he was talking to him. You motherfucking crackers can't tell me how to write a motherfucking show. Fuck y'all. I'm the motherfucking writer of the show. And if you motherfuckers don't like, matter of fact, I'm off the phone. <laughs> and nigga just jumped off the call. It was my first time being on a meeting like that to hear somebody just be fucking real. That shit was encouraging. You know what I'm saying? It made me want to do that, like to, to be real in meetings and not hold my tongue and sit back and let my people do all of the talking. When he drove that meeting and drove that conversation, that showed me that the best shit I can do is be me at all times. Well, Charlie was a man. You At know, all times. He was a man. Like, he was a, a martial artist. He was a legit martial artist. Like, I had some great conversations with him about martial arts. And there was one time that it was me and Maury Smith, who was the former UFC heavyweight champion, and a dude named Ivan Salivary, who was another top flight UFC guy. And Charlie Murphy was holding court. And he was telling people about how they got to respect the Chicago ridge hand, the specific <laughs> type of ridge hand that Charlie was really good at. And it was telling them, and it's it's a legit technique, but it was just funny as shit seeing Charlie Murphy standing there <laughs> holding court. There's the picture of it right there. That's Charlie, and the guy right to his right shoulder, that's Maurice Smith, who's a former UFC heavyweight champion. And the guy across, he got his hand in front of his mouth, that's Ivan Salivary. And he stuck, he believed in the story. The way he got his hand in his mouth, that's like a teacher teaching right now. <laughs> well, he just, he was a powerful figure, you know. Was, when, when I found out that he was sick and that he died, it was, it didn't make sense. Like, Charlie Murphy is bulletproof. But he kept working through his sickness. Yeah. That's what I commend him for, that he was still... Showing up to sets, being yeah. seen, being heard, leaving his legacy so that way we can continue to see him while he was gone. Yeah. It's just... It's sad when we lose people like that, man. It's, yeah, especially a guy like that, you just don't think he's going to get sick. Like, how did he get sick? Well, you know, it's all God's plan, though, Joe. You know, we, we got to be thankful for the time that we had with him. And we both got personal stories and personal relationships with him. So that's all we can be thankful for is the time that we get with people while they're here.